Welcome, FNews57 here. Once again, I'm back on the Xbox Series X. Today, I am playing some MW3, MWZ, and I will be providing you with a detailed explanation and walkthrough for Act 2 of the story, A Mother of Invention. So... Uh, basically, I already covered Welcome to Operation Deadbolt. If you have any questions, ask away in the comment section. And I'm going to give you a brief explanation of all of the 14 missions, and then the story mission you will watch us actually go through and play. So, the first mission is going to be Same Day Delivery. By the way, the devs did fix a bug, so these missions should auto-progress to the next mission when you complete them in-game. This one's really easy. You're going to look for a cargo delivery contract on the map. They have like a little stopwatch icon. Uh, very easy. If you hover over to contract, it tells you what the name of it is. You're going to go ahead and complete that. Um, you're also going to want to destroy the enemy helicopter chasing the cargo delivery truck. It is extremely easy if you have another person with you um, that has a rocket launcher. They can do it very quickly or you can just use the turret on the LTV. But uh, you're probably going to have to drive in circles while your gunner shoots the helicopter because that turret does uh, overheat extremely quickly. Then you're going to need to destroy the cargo delivery vehicle after you complete the contract. This is team-based and it does not necessarily have to be done in one contract, but it can be. So pretty cool there. It's going to give you a refined Ethereum crystal that's going to go into your acquisition stash where it can sit separate from the items that you store. Next up is going to be Safe Cracker. Super easy. You have to complete a raid weapon stash contract, kill 30 zombies that are affected by the drill. Don't allow the safe drill to pause and then exfil with the cryo freeze formula. The cryo freeze formula will be inside the safe when it is finally finished drilling. Uh, do this in a level one low threat zone and you should have absolutely no problems completing all of those steps including not allowing the drill to pause if you try to do this solo in a medium or high threat zone it could be problematic ascension is going to be use a redeploy drone to free fall or parachute to a different zone a different threat zone pretty much go on the map look for a redeploy drone they kind of have like a weird four leaf clover look to them and uh, look for one that's pretty close to the border between two different threat zones go ahead and use it and then parachute your way into a different threat zone so like going from zone one to zone two and when you hit the ground you'll get that uh, merc cleanup is going to be the next one clear 20 mercenaries in merc camps there's usually about a dozen to two dozen mercenaries in a single mercenary camp pretty easy uh, that part is team-based. The Loot 3 Merc Camp caches, though, that only applies if you open them and take out the Mercenary Stronghold keycard, uh, and that is not team-based. So just remember, even if the camp respawns the Mercenaries, if it doesn't respawn the Loot and specifically that keycard, then it doesn't count for the mission. Reaper, collect 15 items from Harvester Orbs and destroy 3 Harvester Orbs. Harvester Orbs are going to be those purple spheres that kind of dit and dart around the map. Best way to find them is just to drive around the map because they're not marked on the map. They only show up on your mini-map, but you can spot them from a good distance away. Shoot them, they drop an item on the ground, pick it up, repeat that process. By the time you've destroyed mm, one, maybe two of the Harvester Orbs, then uh, you should have the 15 items from harvester orbs collecting the 15 items from harvester orbs is team based destroying them is not at least at the time of me recording next up is going to be guardian angel which you're going to need to use the healing aura uh, field upgrade and you're going to need to heal other players 20 times now this is a little bit weird the way this reads because you can be at full health and the other players can be at full health and when you use the healing aura upgrade as long as it hits any player within its range is counted towards that 20 times total. So if you're playing with a friend, use your ability 10 times and you are good to go. If you're playing with randoms, try to stick with them or try to look for other teams that you can just kind of shimmy your way next to and then pop a heal and you could technically get that done in like two uses if you had um, four other players with you. So that one's really easy to do. Shock 
effect is a little bit more of a pain in the ass because you're going to need to stun 25 zombies with the dead wire ammo mod. So you're going to need to either craft a dead wire ammo mod or find a dead wire ammo mod from like ether caches. Put it on your weapon, ideally a weapon with relatively low damage and a high fire rate, and then shoot into a crowd of zombies. Honestly, pretty dang easy, except for the fact that it only procs about once every 30 seconds and it's impossible to stun the same zombie twice. Then you're also going to need to go ahead and stun five special zombies. These zombies are not the zombies that are the HVTs. These are going to be like your manglers and your mimics and stuff. The best way to do that is to get an escort contract because it always spawns at least like two or three manglers and then go ahead and shoot them with that weak weapon that's not pack-a-punched and not upgraded. Hopefully you'll proc the stun effect from Deadwire and then just wait and it is possible to stun the same special zombie more than once. But usually it only occurs about one time before they die. Uh, that is not team based by the way, that's individually. Then you have more firepower, which is super easy. You got to pack a punch a weapon to level two. Can be any weapon. You can use pack a punch crystals if you want the uh, raw Ethereum crystal to get it to level one, and then a pack a punch in zone two to get it to level two. Pack a punch costs 5,000 points in zone one for the first upgrade, 10,000 points in zone two for the second upgrade. Next, kill 75 zombies. Easy point and shoot. And then kill a special zombie. Uh, the easiest way to do that is either the escort contract or just a high value target contract because the high value target counts as a special zombie. After that, you'll have Bounty Hunter, which is complete a big bounty contract. So this is the HVT contract for a, uh, for a Mimic, a Mangler, and a Disciple. The Mangler and Mimic you can get in Zone 1. The Disciple you can only get in Zone 2 or 3. They don't spawn in Zone 1. Uh, this is team based, so anyone who's doing this on the team will get credit for it when the mission is completed. And of course, these reward the whole random perk as a drop. Last but not least there, you're going to have Essence of Ether, which is going to be to find three of the very annoying sample containers. One's going to be in the Hamas Bazaar at the Halku Farms. Uh, then the shops at the resort and the shopping center at the city. So uh, bear with me for a quick second. I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots so you know exactly where they are on the map. This is going to be the screenshot and I am zoomed in a bit for the uh, container at the Hamas Bazaar. So I know you can't see very well, but this is going to be up on the upper right hand side of the map and it's going to be... Uh, unmistakable this is the only spot that looks like it the container is in the dead center of the center building and it looks like well a very large thermos basically uh, simply interact with it and you'll get your progress it is team based and counts for everyone on the team next up is going to be the location for the canister inside the shopping center you can kind of see i've zoomed out a little bit more this is going to be in between the zone one and zone two. It's um, roughly in like the C6, in between C6 and C7 blocks. And it is a small square building like the first building I showed you. Again, same type of container, walk in, interact with it, and it counts for all members of the team. Last but not least is going to be a little bit more frustrating. This one is actually going to be the container that's uh, located in the resort. And I did have to zoom out for this one. You can see it's like C3 is the rough coordinates of it. And it is going to be in the tier 2 zone pretty much um, to the bottom right of where it says resort up there in the top corner. And this is considered the, quote, shops. Walk in, interact with the container. You can't miss it and you're good to go. It also makes a little bit of a buzzing noise, but uh, that can be hard to hear. So those are the three screenshots for that. I know it's not perfect, but that was the easiest way to show them. Next is gonna be Heist, which is complete the ether extractor contract and collect the a filled essence container from an ether extractor. All you're gonna do, pick up the little missile icon contract that says ether extractor, 
uh, go in, successfully complete that. Again, tier one's the easiest. And then collect the canister, which will be in your loot portal. Super easy uh, and team-based. Next up is going to be mind control. This one takes a little bit of time. You're going to need to turn 20 zombies with brain rot. Uh, again, it has about a 30 second cooldown or maybe 45 seconds, depending on how quickly the zombie dies. So shoot a zombie, let it turn, let it kill some zombies. You'll probably get the 25 kills before you actually get the 20 turn zombies. Uh, you either need to make the brain rot ammo mod or find it and then equip it to again a relatively low damage weapon but it's not as important with this one super easy individual tracking it is not team based frostbite freeze 50 zombies with the frost blast field upgrade and freeze five mimics with the frost blast field upgrade this one sucks my friends so obviously you're going to need to use the frost blast field upgrade equip it train some zombies up drop it and it doesn't last very long plus it drops right at your feet when you use it um but it's pretty easy within like maybe two three at the most uses depending on how many zombies you have trained up to get the zombies done the problem is the five mimics uh, for some reason the high value target mimics don't count so your best option is to go and look for ether nests and infested strongholds around the map. They're less common in the tier one zone or low threat zone, but in the medium threat zone, you're usually going to get a mimic at some point in that stronghold. So basically in the infested stronghold, you have to go in and destroy little nodes on the walls to clear out the gas. And as you go through each room, you probably will find a mimic. So what you want to do, equip the ability, go into the game, get the ability, go in, clear the infested strongholds, and just go around the map, making sure before you go into an infested stronghold, you have your ability active. If you are playing with a friend, then you might be able to go kill some uh, zombies and get your ability back before you kill the mimic but the mimics tend to aggro on a single individual and they will not let up so just be prepared you could in theory if you could get your ability back fast enough use it all five times on the same mimic but that's pretty difficult to do so uh yeah that that one's a bit of a pain in the butt to say the least now i'm playing with terra he was able to get it within two uses because every time he used his ability on a mimic it counted as two mimics being frozen i have no idea why because there was only one mimic this is not team based either you have to do that individually last up is going to be exterminator this is the last mission before the story mission and you're going to need to complete a spore control contract uh, so pretty easy to do that one. You're also going to need to complete a contract in under two minutes and 30 seconds for spore control. And then you're going to need to search your loot portal for the rare, sorry, the rare ether tool schematic and successfully exfil from the game. I'll show you uh, just a brief clip of us doing that real quick. And then last but not least is going to be Shepard, which is the story mission. And we're going to show you exactly how to do that. I would recommend you get some pack-a-punched weapons and have decent perks and armor plates before doing any of the story missions. So this is just real quick. Um... Basically, as soon as you pick up the spore contract, which is the one that looks like a bit of an egg, you want to go ahead, go in. Ideally, you're going to have those little disruptor things already equipped and a pack of punched weapon. If you don't have them equipped, you're going to have to stop at the toolbox. If you're doing this solo, it can be a bit of a problem, but if you're doing it with at least one other player that's halfway decent, it's going to go really fast. So you can place one disruptor at each nest, or you can go ahead and place two at one nest, depending on how many are near you. And eventually, once you're completed with that, you'll have that blueprint that I just picked up there for the rare ether tool. And you can see that outside of picking up the mission, we did that in a minute. It's literally a minute game clip. So super easy to do. You just have to be prepared for it. All right, let's go ahead and do the final mission, the story mission. 
So, mother of invention, active mission, Shepard. Let's go. All right, so once you get in the game, you're going to have, after about two minutes, a little pop-up with another extraction-looking point with a star. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Go ahead and highlight it. Get your perks, whatever you feel that you absolutely need. I would recommend having a three-plate vest and a self-revive and pack-a-punch level two on at least one weapon, and then make your way in there. So this is going to be one of those things that it's going to function like exactly the same as the first extraction mission. We're just going to have to kind of defend or basically extract from the game. You can use this time to just farm extra armor plates. Uh, make sure your ammo is topped off. Pretty much, you know, the basic stuff, common sense, so to speak. This guy's uh, got a unique name on him. I wonder why he's being such a butt to defeat. Well, I'm not interested in defeating Drimble there. He's not part of the video. But if you are interested in defeating him... Uh, you might run into him. Coming up on ZZ. Wait for my go. You have your orders. Secure and escort the package to the mission area. Keep it safe until it can be test filed. Let's get it done. So basically everything that you had in the game, you're going to bring with you. Cool beans. It would have been nice to have a few extra armor plates, but hey, what the heck. You're going to go into this private instance of a small section of the bigger map, because, you know, they like to reuse assets, so why not? First thing, though, that you're going to notice that's different, you're going to be given an objective you have to get to. This time, there's going to be mines all over the place. And, of course, we're going to be fighting the mercenaries again. So, yes, that is why I went and actually brought in a riot shield on my back. Riot shields don't do much against zombies, but they can be quite nice as far as keeping bullets from, you know, striking your butt cheeks. Uh, again, mercenaries are super OP. Quick revive is probably a pretty useful perk. Uh, and something I would recommend that you have. Pack 2 on this is not so much for, like, survivability as it is simply because of the fact that, well, you kind of, uh, you need the extra damage just to kill these guys faster before they murder your face. And sometimes even with the extra damage, you get, like, no-hit regs on it. I don't know why. There's a, a center courtyard that's just full of mercenary soldiers. I like my sniper for this just because of how much damage it does. It's like two bullets to kill these guys, depending on where I hit them. And when you're doing this, I would also recommend only putting in, like, one or two armor plates. Since mercenaries strip all of your armor plates within about two bullets, it's really not worth having more. Having a bit of a close-range weapon can be nice difficult to uh to make short work of these guys 
when you have a sniper scope. But pretty much you're going to need to get up top fairly quickly. And then uh, it's going to be all about taking out these SAM sites. Hopefully uh, you don't have a unit that glitches like that. We're probably going to have to back off a bit. The more people you have doing this, and hopefully you don't get stuck on the ladder like I did there, the better you'll be, and the easier this will be. You might be able to actually destroy that Sam by shooting at it, uh, similar to Spec Ops, but I never tried. Oh, shit. There is uh, snipers on this roof. Again, having that, that single armor plate just to protect you. One or two plates in your vest. They get broken at the same speed as three plates. And thankfully, there's plenty of ammo. Probably should have mentioned it wouldn't hurt to bring in a sentry gun. I mean, especially since sentry guns are back in the buy station now. I know you're out there. And if you search enough or you have the um, turret circuit board, there is a deadbolt turret. And I'm pretty sure there's in each story mission going to be a deadbolt turret. So, definitely worth it if you can uh, find the circuit board for it. Definitely worth it to use. Prototype is in your airspace. Arrival imminent. She's heavier than she looks. Took three of us to strap her to the ACV. Grab what you can off the top. Next up, we're going to have to deal with snipers on the rooftops here. And then we're just going to have to actually get over here. There's another deadbolt turret. I mean, it is just, it is really worth it to bring in deadbolt turret circuits. Like, that's probably the biggest suggestion I could make if you were going to do something different from what we're doing right here is bring those deadbolt turret circuits in. Deadbolt turret circuits and, um, well, ideally some, uh, some monkeys. Monkeys are very helpful. You're going to be up against every single zombie as a tier two. So... Plan accordingly, I guess. Hugo found an Ethereum deposit big enough to really test the neutralizer's effectiveness. The vehicle already knows the coordinates. Just make sure the ACV don't get neutralized on the way. This is gonna work. Pretty much exactly the same as your typical escort mission. Um, only problem if you have someone on your team that goes down, you're gonna have to try to get them up quickly. Because you don't want this thing to take a lot of damage, and the hellhounds are really annoying. So, I'm going to try to protect this thing as best as I can. Again, this is one of those missions where 
more people, more guns would definitely be better. Uh, you'll be fighting both mercenaries and zombies, but honestly, the disciples are pretty much the biggest threat, so neutralize them like as fast as humanly possible. Got an insta kill here. That is like freaking huge. They're only going to be tier 2, but you're going to have, like, the extra heavy armor zombies, so Shatter Blast mods work really well in this. You can probably, if you're really OP, do this solo, but I would really recommend a team. way you don't have to worry about stuff in the front as much because it's going to get run over but all the stuff chasing you especially disciples manglers the shit that's got that ranged ability to it man not uh not something that you want to really let live and then if you haven't cleared this yet you're gonna have a shitload of mercenaries and we all know mercenaries are targets, uh, you know, equal opportunists. I'm going to put down my mine right in front here. Go ahead and blast all that butt nasty zombie juice, you know. That's a full armor back there that could be worth it to play for. Get out of my face, disciples. Is he not dead? Nope, he's not. If you are using a riot shield like I am, make sure that you don't stand directly in front of where the sentry gun on this thing is shooting because you'll block the bullets. Now you're going to have big boy. Really, really big, ugly, and angry. If he hits you, he hurts a lot. I wish I brought a couple border strikes into this right now, but well, I didn't find any. with, you know, a little bit of hairiness, you complete it. As you can see, the test was a success. 
The ether neutralizer destabilizes any ethereum within its blast radius. What remains of the element rapidly decays into harmless isotopes. But that was raw, unprocessed ethereum. The material in Zakayev's vial is highly enriched. My projections show this weapons-grade ethereum can withstand our prototype. In other words, you failed. This was a waste of time and resources. Not true. The principle has been proven. We just need to amplify the neutralizer and recalibrate its output. And you can do that, can you? Not quite. But Zakayev obtained research written by the expert on Ethereum enrichment. Strauss. Old mate of yours. Friends are a luxury I can seldom afford. Zakayev stored Strauss's research in a vault. It'll be heavily guarded, but that research holds the key to upgrading the neutralizer. We don't have time for this. Our focus should be Zakayev himself. And if we find him, then what? He unleashes his remaining vial, and we have nothing to counter it. Deadbolt might be able to hammer this thing hard enough to contain him. But if the objective is to end it, that neutralizes our best shot. Fine. Get Strauss's data. See what Dr. Jansen can do with it. there you go that is all of act two successfully completed remember if you have any questions feel free to ask post a comment i'll do my best to help you out otherwise do me a huge favor smash those like and subscribe buttons as that greatly helps me out the searchability of videos here on youtube until next time stay frosty